As kids, we all have dreams. Those dreams are usually grand. Sometimes they're whimsical. I often wonder how often we give thought to achieving those dreams, or if we ever give any thought to what achievement in itself actually looks like. I remember when my big dreams first started to take shape. I had to be about nine or ten years old, and my father taking me to the Queen's Park Cobalt to see the Trinidad Tobago national team play. I just started playing in goal myself, so I was transfixed on the keeper that day, Tobago young John Granville. I remember thinking, that's who I wanted to be. That's where I wanted to be. I wanted to put on my national team colours, the red, white and black, and be playing in front of 20,000 people. Aside from being focused on the goalkeeper, I'm not sure that my dreams were any different from any other 9 or 10 year old at the time. You see, back then, the game was everything to us. It was magical. You could get hundreds coming out to watch an under-14 game. For the big high school games, you could get 15,000 people cramming into the national stadium. School was about community. It was also the perfect foundation for the development of our sport, of who we were. It's where we found our heroes, and our heroes went on to change the world. The Caribbean can boast of so many who have shaped the world as we know it today. Politically, from Marcus Garvey to Kwame Toure to Dr. Eric Williams. Musically, from Bob Marley to Rihanna. Did you know that the first black Miss Universe, Janelle Penny Commission, hails from tiny Trinidad and Tobago? Her win in 1976, changing an industry's perception and portrayal of beauty. Or that the youngest U.S. board-certified surgeon and current Howard University president, Dr. Wayne Frederick, also is from Trinidad and Tobago, as does Facebook's global head of diversity, Maxine Williams. Two people shaping the world as we know it today. But in sport, we tend to be infatuated with these grand institutions, such as Clairefontaine in France or the IMG Academy in Florida. Now, just to put things in perspective, back in the 1980s, France grew increasingly frustrated with their disappointments at the highest levels of international football. So they decided to invest in an elite academy, centered it in Clairefontaine. But some 30 years later, France can albeit boast multiple World Cup wins and a wealth of international talent. The IMG Academy in Bradenton, Florida is a multi-sport facility with pretty much the same remit and similar results. But we discount the job that Kenya does in producing the world's best long-distance athletes, or the job that tiny Jamaica does in producing the brightest track and field stars of today, or the role that their own high school championship plays, boys and girls champs, in producing incredible talents as you see in Bolt and Veronica Campbell-Brown. Culture, identity and community eclipsing infrastructure. Infrastructure is nothing without that culture and its community. The African proverb says it takes a village. And this is where I'd like to challenge that village. Are we doing enough? Are we doing enough for our young entrepreneurs and designers in giving them the global platform that their work deserves? In this technology age where the world is at their fingertips, are we showing our young coders and scientists that it's their uniqueness that will allow them to stand out, to excel. Because when we do, the village benefits. In just the same way that community empowers success, success can and should empower communities. NBA star LeBron James went back to his home city in Akron, Ohio and opened the I Promise School, catering to the city's most at-risk and challenge families and students, providing opportunity and employment for hundreds. Or you see in bold, going back to Jamaica and insisting that all his commercial suits be done on the island, employing local workmen, giving them exposure and experience that they otherwise were denied. Now, I'm not asking you to build a school. It could be something far simpler, but every bit as meaningful. Can you give a young athlete a ride to training in their moment of need? Can you provide a healthy meal for them when they're through training? Are we being careful and thoughtful about what we post on social media? 
I stand here humbly recognizing that I've realized many of those dreams of my younger self. But there's still so much that I wish I could go back and say to nine-year-old me. There's no Google Maps for success. It's a long, hilly and winding road. Success isn't measured in world records or medals. It isn't defined by wins and losses. Success is yours to define and define and redefine again if you have to. I'd say to my nine-year-old self, take a moment, take your eyes off John Granville just for a moment and look around. You have everything you need to empower your chase for those dreams. You have examples, both on the field and standing right next to you. You have a community that will be there for you in your moments of most need. And you have a village that will make it all worthwhile. Now go out and be fearless in your chase. And most importantly, on that long, winding and hilly climb to success, enjoy every single step.